Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a Physics 7c practice problem on the topic of the electrostatic model. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like, it really helps our channel. Okay, so this is the uh, problem that we're going to be working with today. So we have a charge of 20 coulombs, it's fixed to be 10 centimeters away from a second charge of negative 5 coulombs. Uh, if Mercu Mercutio? Mercutio? I don't know. Which is to place a charge of uh, two coulombs somewhere along the line defined by the two charges such that it experiences no net electrostatic force, where should he place it? Okay, so as you can see, I have my drawing over here. And basically, what this dude is trying to accomplish is uh, he wants to place a charge somewhere along this green dotted line. This is the line defined by the two charges, by the way. So you would just create a line between the two charges and then this is a line. So it can't be anywhere up here or down here. It, it has to very strictly uh, be on this uh, specific line over here. And then somewhere in this line, what we want is such that the charge experiences no net force. Now, in this case, I named my charges one and two. So one being positive 20, two being negative five. And then the extra charge that I'm going to place, I decided to call it uh, Q3. And then Q3 has a charge of two coulombs. This is only for the purpose of just keeping everything super neat for you guys. I always like naming my things. Uh, I, it's just easier for me to work uh, that way. So the first thing that we have to figure out is like just very vaguely where is this charge gonna be is it gonna be over here is it gonna be in the middle of them both or is it gonna be on the right and to do that uh, i'm just gonna go ahead and um just redraw this over here well first of all let's just remember that an f is just a charge times an electric field right now, positive charges produce electric fields going outwards. So a positive charge produces a field going outwards. And then, of course, in reality, it produces it like in circle. But we're now, um, you know, we're only interested in like the line. But it, it goes outwards. That's what I'm trying to say here. And then for the negative, the electric field that a negative charge produces is inwards. So inwards. I don't really know if inward is a word in English, but we're just gonna go ahead and roll with it. So outward and inwards, which means that if you have two charges placed together like this, then this guy, which is positive, the positive one is going to produce an electric field on the line that goes like this. And then the negative one, the blue, is going to be producing an inwards, like inwards. And now this goes, you know, all the way like this. So, and again, this goes, the pink ones also go all the way like this. So, as you can see, we, um, we basically have just one option in which this is going to work. Because this is 20 coulombs and this is negative 5. So, these aren't exactly the same amount of charge over here. Now, in the center, this area is not gonna work. Because all you have is a right moving arrows and right moving vectors are not gonna cancel each other. So this is not gonna cancel each other. And now we have two possible options. So we have this possible option and then we have uh, this possible option. Now, why is this possible option not gonna work? Well, because this is 
20 and this is negative 5. And another thing that we need to remember about these electric fields is that they are radial, which means that they are the strongest at the, uh, you know, the closer that you are to the particle, the strongest that it is. So in reality, what's happening over here is that my positive charge produces very big arrows that go smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller like this and then the negative one this one is bigger and then smaller and then smaller and then smaller like this so basically Oh, and then this one is four times greater, right? So basically what I'm trying to say is that this negative five, by the time uh, that the electric field of this one gets over here, is going to be so tiny and so small compared to like this guy, which is going to be at its strongest, that there is no way that they are going to cancel out over here. So what needs to happen is it needs to be somewhere over here, because by the time that this electric field gets over here, it's going to be smaller um, and it's going to basically match this negative 5 um, vector over here. So these arrows are going to be, these ones don't cancel out. Because uh, Q1 is bigger than Q2, one being the positive one, and these guys And these cancel out somewhere. So like somewhere in this line over here to the right of these guys, somewhere over here, they must cancel out. Uh, and we have to figure it out. But it's going to be somewhere over here. And again, uh, it would be good for you to take the L because that's where you are really going to see that, you know, the arrows have to be very big and then they get smaller. And then these being so tiny in comparison to this one, by the time that these arrows get over here, are going to be so minuscule. But when you think about it, not even at its biggest, they're going to be as big as this one, right? So you would be comparing a smaller version of this to the biggest version of this, and they're not going to cancel out. You need these 20 coulombs to mitigate a little bit by going away from it so that they can match um, these five over here. So basically, the answer must be somewhere, you know, over here. So now that we figure this out, then this problem actually it's sort of easy because all we have to do is just um, put an equation on it and figure it out. So let's just suppose that my Q3 which is positive 2 coulombs is an x distance away from q2 like this so now that we have this we just remember what we want and then we just go ahead uh, and go for it so we want f net experience y3 to be equal to zero and f net that tree is experiencing would just be f of one on three plus f on two uh, by two on three. So this one puts force here, this one puts force here. If you add it up, then you get your net, right? And we want this to be equal to zero. So we just go ahead and use our definitions over here. Um, so let's just start with this one. So this is k times um, little q, which is uh, plus 2, big q, which is plus 20 in this case. And then the distance from 1 to 3 is this entire distance. Because this is 1 on 3, so I'm going to be using this entire distance, and I'm going to be using um, this this 4, so that's why I did 20 over here, this is over here, and then I'm going to use this. So this is uh, 0 0.1 meters 
plus x square. And then this guy over here is little q, big Q in this case is negative five. And then the distance here would just be x squared and this has to be equal to zero. Uh, so from this, our uh, k's go away and actually this uh, plus two goes away over here. And let's see. Yeah, so we have 20 over 0 0.1. And then this was negative, so it would go away positive over here, like this. And then I'm just gonna cross this out. So if I cross them out, I get 20x squared because I don't like having fractions. And then this crosses out over here five times. 0 0.1 plus x squared, like this. And then I can just divide by four. Uh, four x squared is equal to, and then I can just, well, the five goes, uh, divide by five, I'm sorry, I divided by five, so that 20 divided by five is four, and then this five goes away, but then I have to expand this uh, so if I expand this guy, this is 0 0.1 square is equal to 0 0.01. Then 2 times this, so this would be plus 0 0.2x. And then this square would be um, plus x square. At this point, I'm just doing algebra. Like, I don't know if you noticed this, but once I got to this point, it's just algebra. Uh, the physics is done at this point, so I'm just trying to figure it out. Um, so we have a quadratic equation. So when you have a quadratic equation, you always want it to be equal to zero. So let's see. So this goes over here. So 3x squared minus, because it's going to the other side, 0.2x minus, because it's going to the other side, 0.01. This is equal to zero. And we've got ourselves a quadratic equation. How do we solve a quadratic equation? We use quadratic formula. Now, this is a physics quiz, not a math quiz. So I can 100% guarantee you that if we have no problem giving you the actual physics equation on a physics quiz, that we will have even less uh, of an issue giving you the quadratic formula. So I'm pretty sure, like a thousand percent sure, that students were given this uh, formula, this equation, whatever you want to call it, I guess it's an equation. But uh, don't let this uh, fool you or don't think that you have to remember it again. We don't even have an issue giving you the actual physics equations. Why would we have an issue giving you equations that aren't even, you know, related to like the physics per se? Of course, the students must have been given this formula or equation, whatever. So I'm not, uh, don't concern you, yourself about it. Um, it's just an equation. But um, I really don't want to bother myself solving this because it, it's not physics, it's just algebra. And to be quite honest, I don't even remember <laughs> what the quadratic formula looks like. I would be one of those students that would really need it. But, um, you know, I went ahead and just did it on Wolfram Alpha and it factorizes like this. So it factorizes like this if you use your quadratic formula, which I guess the three goes away because it just goes dividing. So my two positive answers are meters. Now, from these two answers, only this answer makes sense because this answer is a positive distance uh, from Q2 to Q3 as I defined it. This answer
this answer doesn't really make sense because it would place x on uh, this range over here and you know as we said at the beginning of this problem the charge can't possibly be placed over here it's not going to work because we would just have this situation going on. So even though algebraically, you know, it shows up as a final answer, we do have to remember that this isn't just algebra. This relates to an actual physics scenario. And even though algebraically this answer is permitted, uh, physics, uh, when it comes to the physics, it just doesn't make sense. So we're only going to take this final, uh, this answer as our final answer. And then once we do this, the, the problem has been completed. So if you guys have any questions, um, you know, go to the L, make sure that you're reading your DL. This is a very, this is kind of like an easy problem, uh, quadratic equation aside, because all you had to do was use your equation. And then like literally once you get to this point, you're good. Like the physics is just this part. The rest of it is just, um, you know, the little bit of algebra to get there. But I think that this is, you know, not such a bad problem to practice and to study because, you know, these are very common in Physics 7C. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, leave a like. I do. Um, please leave a comment. I do read them. And I will see you guys on the next video.